on this computer. So this is a review of a question on the quiz that I'm, I don't know if people got, how many people got this wrong, but whatever. Uh, so I'm making up numbers, but it's the same question type. Uh, we have 820 people who raced. We had 285 complete the race. We had 15 people who were disqualified and 20 people who quit. So we want to know how many didn't finish. as a percent. That's what we wanna know. So the two easiest ways to do this, let's do the first one, is I take how many people? So how many didn't, how many didn't finish? I think that's where it got me mixed up. So it, there's 320 total, wouldn't I subtract the the complete number right there? That's one way to do it. So I could take 320 minus 85 or 285, or I could add 15 and 20. Uh, and I don't know about you, I like smaller numbers when I'm doing math than larger numbers. So I would do this one personally. But you need, just need to find that number. And they'll be the same number. So that's 35 people. Did not finish. Forgot. This is, I'm so used to the, my computer slowing me down. I get a fast computer and all of a sudden I can't write. So at that point, we take our 35 people and divide it by 320. And that will be the percent that we have. So 35 divided by 320 is, no, it's the decimal, not the percentage. Sorry, 0.109. Okay, so real quick, real quick, the formula for that is what the percentage equals the part or the part divided by the whole number or the and total? Then, then times 100. So you got to remove the decimal place twice. So it was 10.9%. So other options would have been to find the percentage complete. So 100 minus percent complete. Or find percent of everything. and then add them up. So those could have been done. So this was number five, please. I'm not going to try the little, I'm not trying to let's see if I can get this in. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So let me go ahead and save this. Show up, yeah. So does that make sense? This is my phone's working in the other room. As I'm hawking down mints to keep myself from coughing. Okay, everyone got that? 
before I go on to the next one? So quick. Okay, we gonna do on the next. Anyone still need this? Um, yes. Yeah, so if you have two screens, what I what well, I usually have two screens, but I'm still trying to work on my old computer. What I would do is I would put like, I would have like my chat and like any my uh whatever i'm looking at over here along with you guys and then i'd have this one just for that you can split a zoom call between multiple screens so that's saved okay let me go on to number six it's really kind of bugging me that i don't have two screens right now actually i just found out i can have three and I'm like, I kind of want a third monitor now. So number six is total return. Total. I'm going to use my doggy coins for this one. So that's ending value minus initial divided by my initial. So I'm going to go right back, give you right back. I'm going to grab my phone because it has all my info. Okay, so I bought doggy coins because I'm insane at I got 76 coins at, at, and I will do this at 6.5 cents. So I will just, I will, this is my stuff. I'm just calculating it because I just find it hilarious. Zero six five. So I got $4.94 with a doggy coin. So initial. Or doge coin, whatever you want to call it. And right now, it is currently worth $12.94. 
23.7 cents. So 76 times 0 0.237, $18 and one cent. So what is my total return? So I have earned part is $18.01. I it cost me $4.94. And that's all over $4.90. Four cents. So eighteen point oh one minus four point nine four is thirteen point oh seven. Over four point nine four, and then that by way four point nine four is two six four. Or six five. It's two two point six four five, but you don't get partial pennies. Actually, it's percentages. So two point six four five. So this is a percentage. So you had to turn it into or divide by a hundred. Actually, it's times by a hundred. Yeah, times a hundred. If I move this to, so I had a two hundred sixty four. 0.5% total return. Which is, by the way, a crazy investment. Yeah, people don't realize. And the sad thing is I sold a lot of them when they were like 0.6 cents and it really kind of killed me. So you take how much you have at the end, you minus how much you started with, and you divide it by how much you started with. Like my, uh, which is funny because they don't give me that. They just give me percentage. It's actually off by 5% on here. Hmm. So does that make sense? You can see I'm a high stakes roller here. Five bucks in docky coins. Turned into lunch. A real, actually I've turned a lunch into a dinner really. That's what I did. Um, okay, what other questions did we have? And this is from the all, first three chapters in general. Um, I'm still not understanding the Fahrenheit and the Celsius. I still get mixed up with it. Okay. Is there I still get mixed up with it. I mm, okay. So Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then we'll do a Celsius to Fahrenheit. If I get right, so I'm going to use it my because I'm not in a place that's insanely hot. Highs and lows. So my, actually it is at the high temperature today. So I am currently at 89 Fahrenheit. Well, what is our Celsius? 
Mia, do you wish it was like 50% humidity? <laughs> yeah, because I go to the south a lot and it's always humidity out there. I, I went out there when I was younger the first time. I was like, why am I sweating? I don't sweat out here. Why is the rain hot? Yeah, you think that's bad. It's like when you walk outside, it's not raining. And you're just, you can't breathe. So, yeah. so it's F minus 32 times five over nine. I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah. So I would take 89 minus 32 times five divided by nine, which gives us, let me see, do, 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 calculator, 89 by 32, 57. Times five over nine. So times five. So 57 times five divided by nine. 31.6 repeating. So the low here. There's a way I could turn this in Celsius. Oh, it's right there. Mm, Celsius. So the low today is going to be 22 Celsius. So let's see. So we take. Celsius, we do literally the exact opposite. Celsius times nine fifths, and you subtract 32. Or you add 32, rather. Yes, you add 32. So, we have 22 times 9 fifths, you add 32. So this is 39.6. Come on, plus 32 is 71.6. So the low for tonight is 71.6 degrees. So these formulas right here are what you need. Can we do one more of those converting Celsius to Fahrenheit? Just yeah, yeah. We'll do that. Let me clear everything out. So do Celsius. That's that was Fahrenheit plus thirty-two over five times five over nine. And then the other one was Celsius times nine fifths 
and what this is. Hold on, sorry. Let's subtract 32. Uh, I had the wrong thing. And then this is add 32. So Phoenix. Low is 28 Celsius. And this and the high is 108 Fahrenheit. I don't miss Phoenix at all. So 108 minus 32. times five divided by nine. So 108 minus 32 is 76 times five over nine times five. So it's 380 over nine or uh, 41 ish degrees, 42.2 repeating. So it's 42 degrees Celsius, makes you think it's cooler. Then over here, for Celsius, you take 28 times nine fifths, and then we're gonna add 32. So 50.4 plus 32, which would give us 82.4. So we're doing subtract 32 times five divide nine. And over here, we're multiplying divide five and then add 32. Those are the steps for Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay. Everyone have that done? Everyone kind of gets an idea of how to do those? Do you understand how to do the Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius? Okay. Uh, so what else can I help you guys with? Um, 
I had a question. I had two actually. The first one was, I was wondering if you had like a list of all the equations and stuff that we would be using during the, the, the quiz. And if not, I can just go back and copy them down. Um, um, no, I do not. I can look. No real I can look real quick. This is over the review, right? Yeah. And then I was having issues on the f of x stuff. <laughs> oh, the functions. Uh, yeah, not to my favorite. See, we are doing. Unit rates, so from turning things into dollars per pound and pounds per dollar, that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to do conversions, so centimeters to meters, gallons to liters, stuff like that. Um, oh, dollar euros per liter to dollars per gallon. area of a box in feet and cubic inches. Which one's hard? Cubic inches. Uh, so the dollars you No, that's actually just a simple. I used to do this all the time when I went to Canada, actually. Okay, so let's do that one. Um, so E to liters, two dollars per gallon. So, The current conversion rate, actually, let's get the actual conversion rate. Point eight five euros to the dollar. And then 3.8 liters to one gallon. So if I get, let's, I'm going to do it the other way. So my fit gets 35. Wait, what is it? This is the question. Let's get this right. Oh, I see. It is currently $3.25 a gallon at my local neighborhood store. At gas station. How much is that in euros? So first thing you do is you start with three twenty-five dollars for one gallon. So what you do is you want to make sure you cancel units. So if I have a dollar, on, so to cancel units, by putting unit opposite, I'll put that in quotes. So I had, for instance, 
0.85 euros to $1. So since I have a dollar up top, I'm going to want to put a dollar, if I could draw it, on bottom so that these units here would cancel out. And then the euro, which is this thing, would be left. So up here, I have one gallon, so that will go up top. So it cancels out here and here. And the liters will go on the bottom. <clears throat> so at that point, we get the euro up top. I don't know how it is set up, the, what symbol it is, but I'm just doing that. And then we'll have liters on bottom. And then you just multiply across the top and divide by the bottom. So three, three point two five times point eight five, which is two point seven six two five, and then divided by three point eight. So seventy three cents a or euros a liter. So our similar one to this is. And when I was up in Canada buying gas. Okay, so gas prices in Vancouver, BC are currently, holy smokes. I am, uh, it's, uh, it's in a dollar fifty nine, a dollar sixty a liter. Holy smokes. The dollar sixty Canadian a liter. That is stupid expensive, as you're about to find out. So once again, three point eight liters to the gallon. <coughs> Look up US or Canadian dollars. So US dollar is one Canadian dollar. Well, 79 cents US. So what is the dollars per gallon based on Canadian? So I have a dollar, dollar 60. Canada, Canadian dollar per one liter. So I have one dollar Canadian down here so that these cancel out and 79 cents goes up top. And I just leave it as a dollar so I don't have to do weird conversions. Then I have 3.8 liters to one gallon. So 1.6 times 0.79 times 3.8 <coughs> is me $4.80 a gallon. To where I used to live. Which is pretty close to California prices. Okay, does that help with some people's issues with those? So this is what, if you have to take chemistry, this is exactly how you set up, it's called stoichiometry. It moves from one to the other to cancel out units so that when you get to the end, you're left with the units you want. And the easiest way to make sure you do it right is to cancel out those units. Mm. Okay. 
Everyone has issues with this, trust me. Oh, you do not want to teach high school chemistry because oh, you get so annoyed. <laughs> because you guys have one chapter of it. They have like an entire year of it. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't really go away. It just changes names. Yeah, I went from physics to chemistry. No, wait, I went from trigonometry to physics to chemistry. I hated all three classes. Yeah, and the chemistry, you just do this forever. Until you, uh, hit, or until you hit organic, and then you want to go back to math. You don't want to do organic. Okay, so that's done. What's you guys got anything else? Or you mentioned something about the functions earlier. Which one? What? Somebody mentioned something about functions f of x and oh f of x. So like what? Like basically, what's the f of three? That kind of nonsense. Yeah, it was like all the tables and stuff, and I was in, and it had like big numbers in it, and it was f of x of something in the recent. I think I'm, I'm looking for one. Quiz. Oh, it was in the quiz or not the quiz sorry i think it was in like the video assignment where we'd watch a video and then it gave me like a problem that was you didn't really do any functions i'm looking at the review you didn't ignore it i'm literally looking at your review you have none okay so is that just like for the, the later quiz then because i think maybe i went ahead for some reason i don't know it might, it might be a wrong link but functions are something for algebra, not for you guys. I have a question about one of the um, problems I had for the f of x equals a b with the exponential. Oh, yeah, one of those things? Yeah. Yeah. So I had a question where it asked me what was the, there was a, D, a dk of, say, 13%. Then it asked me what was the, you know, how it says it's the, equation is decreasing and it gives you the option to decrease or increase at a rate of something per something mm -hmm. i i didn't quite get it until later because that point point nine three that was in the equation because it's it was like five parentheses point nine three to the eighth you know something like that mm -hmm. is do i subtract that nine point three from one to see what the actual rate was because i think i came up with seven percent yeah it's it's the difference from one so if you DK, it's the, you know, one minus that value is your percent DK. So that if I were to move the decimal, 93% wouldn't have been the right answer. It would have have to been seven, right? Yes, one minus the value. Okay, now see that's I need to confirm, thank you. And if you're increasing it, you can either say, remove the one and move that, or the answer minus one. Can we do one problem, maybe one of each a DK and a growth? Yeah, the growth is is basically how far away are you from one? So you can do the, if you want, if it, it makes you help, uh, you uh, useful, you can just do a number line. So, this is one. So DK is here. So how far away? So you're going down 0.07 or 7% would be 0.93 and the same amount this way, 0.07 or 7% growth would be 1.07. So you're still going 7%, it's just how far away from that one. Okay. Does that help or does that confuse? Um, I'm a little of both. <laughs> little of both I, I, get, I, get the, I get the decay part, but when you threw in the growth, it just threw me off. It just means the same 7%, you're just going above one. So it's the same 7%. I'm either subtracting seven or I'm adding seven or 0 0.07. So the same percent growth or decay happens in, in either way, just from that one. So you could technically do one, two, 
one minus change that. And if it's if your number starts at because if I have put it in here, if I have one minus zero point nine three, then I get zero point zero seven. If I have one minus one point zero seven, I get negative zero point zero seven. But with the absolute value, I just turn into a positive. And I know these are going to be growth because it's above one. And these will be decay because they're less than one. So this is a way to do it as well. Just have to realize decay versus growth based on the number that's in there that you're looking at. Okay, so with that, all that being said, now my next question would be leading up to how you get those table charts and it asks you, you know, to write an equation. And is it always going to be if it says a certain whole number, is it always going to be the linear equation we use? And then if it says a percentage is that are we going to use those exponential function equations for those for those ones well i'm trying to figure this out uh like making it uh just... they it ask a question like they give you a table and it says that so many students increased like 88 students increased by two years or something like that and then another one is like 15 percent increased over four years Yes. So if it's uh, uh, y equals mx plus b increased by, so it's a line, maybe you increased by like 20 students. It has to be a whole number then. No. Well, if you're students, yes. You can't have a part of a person. But if it increases by a set amount each year, then it is a linear. If it is uh, y equals a rate, the time, something like this, it would be increase by 12% a year. That uses this one here. So you'd have 1.12 to the T. And that's an exponential. Okay, so then it also asks the question, it says um, increases twice a semester or it increases every four years. How do we express that, express that with the inside that, um, equation because I had trouble with that because I'm so used to doing it just by the year that I got tripped up when it asked me by every four years or twice twice a year. Every four years would be because you do over four years. It takes four years to get one unit of time. Okay. All right. If it's twice a semester, you have two 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 terms, it happens twice in one. So this would be multiple times. So uh, see a number. So greater than one is a whole number. And this will come up next week, whenever we start doing interest and all that. And if it's less than one, it'd be fraction. In time. And if I, I'm pretty sure that's right, and if I'm wrong, then I'll give you guys the points and I. Uh, and I'll redact myself it actually sounds like a album title isn't there a song by um band out of tempe like that oh. 
are they mainstream or are they still kind of indie? They were mainstream and they went back to indie. Only and I know from Brazil that Authority was zero. Me. Authority zero. Passage in time. Which either like solidifies my cred or destroys it. I don't know which one. Um, I found what I was talking about and I guess I explained it differently. Okay. <laughs> it was the video was comparing linear and exponential equations. And then the table, I have it up here. It's like an investment is worth this amount of money, right in an equation representing the value of this investment. And then yeah. it's like A, B, C, and D of like the value increases by $812 per year. Okay. And I didn't. The Go, video, ahead. Go ahead and share. Oh, uh, OK. Um, how do I do that? <laughs> On the bottom, it says share screen. Yes. Oh, I have to go to my system preferences. That's cool. It's annoying. Give me one second. It is taking its time. Okay. Okay, I'm doing an animal check to make sure I'm not about to squish a dog. Oh, I have to quit and reopen my Zoom in order to share my screen. What? That's which what it's just told me. Which question is it? It is question 15 in the video lesson of chapter three. Okay, and we'll just do this. Video lesson. Video lesson, chapter three. A lot of the videos in the video lessons give me like the basic equations and then when it gives me the the things I have to practice with it's like a totally new thing that I have to wow. figure out and I'm like, oh no <laughs> can't I just practice what you gave me first okay so that one yeah so like the the on this one a and d is the value increases by six hundred twelve dollars a year or 587 decrease that is a, that is a linear, those are slopes. So that's what your slope would be. Okay. And for B and C where it increases and decreases, that's where you do your initial value of 8,200 times, it'd be 1.09 1, 1 to the T or 0.94 to the T. Oh, what? <laughs> I, oh. Cause I thought this was like the F of X stuff. Cause that's what the video showed. Yes, cause he's okay. James is doing, or uh, 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 Mr. Sue says there is doing stuff based on very specific things that he wants to do because he's teaching toward okay. the next class. What he's okay. doing is the, the equations that we had when we we're looking at uh, share screen whiteboard where you had the decrease, where you had the initial value. Oh, so it's just the initial value stuff and is the and money one. Oh plus or minus rate yeah. to the T. That's what you're doing. Oh, OK. So the, the money amount would be the initial, mm -hmm. and then the percentage would be the, the rate. Rate, so one plus or minus that. Yes. And then T is your time. Ah, OK, OK. I got it. That makes so much sense. Thank you. OK. And the other one, like I said, is just a linear regression with the value amount with your B. So that would be. Um, the change times x uh, plus your start, your initial rather. So those are the two ways to set it up. And this is the exponential and this is the linear. Okay. Anybody else got anything? Well, it's been quiet for like three seconds, so I'm sure people's brains are dead. <laughs>